So Godzilla vs. Kong has been out for a little bit of time now, and I'm gonna give, be giving my uh, spoiler video on this, so let's get into it. Alright, there was so much I wanted to talk about in my prior video that I can talk about now, and... A lot of the stuff that I wanted to talk about, like I said, since it's not a spoiler in the last one, it's just I, I wanted to talk about what I like so much, but I couldn't because it would be getting into spoilers. So, free to talk about them now. So if you guys haven't seen the movie, leave the video. What are you doing? You have HBO Max, go watch it on HBO Max. You can see it in the theater, go see it in the theater. So, last chance. Let's go. So basically, Godzilla's attacking these Apex facilities at the beginning of the movie, or facility. I don't think he attacked multiple, I think he just attacked one. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he attacked one. Um, oh my god, oh, this is going to be terrible. So Godzilla's attacking this Apex facility at the beginning of the movie. There, um, and basically the humans are thinking that he's just destroying stuff for no reason. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, uh, this is... Pretty obvious uh, since we got a shot of him in the trailer, but they're uh, they're building Mega Godzilla, and they're trying to replace Godzilla with this, and it's sending out signals, and Godzilla's following them. So that's why he's attacking the facilities is that he wants to destroy the mech, and yeah, that's pretty much the reason why. Even though he's clearly killing tons of innocent people in his way, but what's a little bit of collateral damage? Meanwhile, Kong is kept in captivity by the humans somehow, which that's one thing, like I said, you, you, like, one thing I can say is that you can't think about it too much, like, they don't even try to explain the science, and that's good, because if they did, it would just make it come across as even more stupid, <laughs> um, but like I said, you, you can accept it because they never try to explain it, so they, they just keep things moving. This is an hour and 54 minute movie? And it's, it moves fast, so it doesn't try to explain a lot of things. It, uh, like, one thing I can say is that this feels like a 2000s movie with Godzilla and Kong. That's what it kind of feels like. Uh, it feels kind of like Transformers in terms of like it just being a fun popcorn flick. And there's really nothing wrong with that because it, it, it really is something that you just lay back, relax, and just enjoy all the way through. Um, but yeah, so somehow they transferred Kong into this facility that's like... <laughs> it kind of reminded me of the uh, the Truman Show. <laughs> um, there's like this fake Skull Island that he's on. And it's just like, yeah, so how do you get him there? But whatever, he, he's been there and the little girl has been teaching him, a little deaf girl has been teaching him sign language. Um, which I've always, I, I thought this was the cutest um, interactions was between Kong and this little girl. They clearly have a connection. If there's one human character that I can say it's actually really, you know, I guess vital and very, you know, contributes a lot in terms of emotion to this movie, it's definitely the little girl and when she's with Kong and it, it's just, it's great interactions and it, it's really cute. Um, but yeah, she taught him sign language and it's funny because one thing I did think about, and you know, I mean, like I said, I just overthink a lot of stuff. And it, it, it's by my nature, but you know, I was able to sit back a lot anyways. Um, but, like, there was a scene where they're like, okay, so the monkey knows how to talk with sign language? I'm like, yeah, you guys didn't know this? Like, you guys had him under 24 hour surveillance and you guys didn't see him, like, throwing up gang signs and stuff? But. Yeah, it's just like, how'd you guys not know about this? But that's not important. So this scientist introduces the idea of taking Kong into the Hollow Earth, which Apex is bringing a scientist along with them that's under disguise to get an energy source from the Hollow Earth to power up their Mecha Godzilla, because it keeps on dying at 40%. So they want to be able to power it up at like 100% and just have it unlimited power. So. They need to extract something from there, so they try to take Kong to there, and guys, I am not kidding, this movie moves so fast to the point where we get a Godzilla and Kong fight really early on, and Godzilla is really like the bully of this movie, like, 
Sure, they explain that they have an ancient rivalry between their species, but I'm just like, nah, Godzilla's just a bully. <laughs> he's just, he's, he's starting stuff with Kong for no reason. And then Kong's just over there roaring at him, saying, bro, what I do? And it's just like, it, it, it really is something that I kind of think is funny, but the, like this, this is where I'm talking about the fights are just incredible because this boat fight is everything that I would expect a water fight to be with Kong and Godzilla. Like Kong's jumping from boat to boat, trying to avoid Godzilla's atomic breath. Godzilla hops on the boat and we get that one shot Kong punching him. But then Godzilla just pimp slaps Kong and he goes flying. And um, the, they saved Kong's butt multiple times in this fight. Uh, Godzilla almost drowned Kong, which I expected that to happen. And they saved him from that. And one thing that I thought was cool that he got out of there with is that he played dead. And so Godzilla basically just swims away thinking that he's won. which was very smart of Kong to do, I, I gotta say. And they really highlight Kong's overall intelligence in this movie and they really explore his species a lot once they get into the Hollow Earth. And we have a couple of monster battles in there between Kong and these like flying snake-like creatures. I think they're called Warbats. Yeah, they're Warbats. And so the humans save them from that too, but Kong just demolishes them. Uh, but he retrieves the axe from there. Like I said, there's a reason why the story moves from point A to point B. And the reason why Kong really went into ho the Hollow Earth was to give him a uh, weapon. A weapon to even the playing field with Godzilla and his atomic breath. Because Godzilla somehow senses this and shoots his atomic breath into the Hollow Earth. Like the center of the Earth. And I'm just like, dang, he's that powerful. So... He, Kong climbs back up and we have our second battle. And I would be lying if I said this isn't flawless because it gives you everything you really want. Like, there's so many moments that are just so good. This third act is just well, monster movie perfection. So the fight goes very back and forth. Um, this is the second round, technically. And Kong really actually starts getting Godzilla. Except Godzilla's making great use of that atomic breath a couple of times. And Kong's like climbing over buildings and trying to jump in the air and dodge. Godzilla blasts his back a couple of times, but and then Kong's fur catches fire and he's like rolling on the ground trying to put it out. It's like, these guys are scrapping. <laughs> and then everybody's like, why doesn't Kong just grab Godzilla's mouth to do that? Well, he actually like tries to split his jaw open. Go <laughs> Kong tries that, but Godzilla like, releases a little burst really fast, and Kong's like, oh shoot, let me let go. And it's just, it, it's such a good battle. But needless to say, Kong hops on Godzilla's back and then Godzilla just completely wails on him, scratches his chest. I call that marking his territory. Um, <laughs> and then he stomps on Kong's chest and then basically lets him know, hey, I'm the winner. Kong submits. He just lets go and is like, alright, I'm done. Uh, which, yeah, I mean, I kind of expected Godzilla to win. I made a video prior saying who was going to win before the movie even came out because I, I, I know, like, story beats. Once they showed that Mechagodzilla was going to be in this, I was like, oh, Kong's not winning. <laughs> you know, so uh, I chose the right t-shirt. Um, but yeah, this is, I mean, the way Godzilla won, I wasn't even mad. And I wouldn't have been mad if Kong won either. I love both these monsters. Sure, I'm a bit biased towards Godzilla, but I wouldn't have been mad if Kong won. I would have been like, alright, that's cool. Um, but since Godzilla won, I was just like, awesome. Uh, so Mechagodzilla finally is activated using the power source that 
uh, a disguised scientist from Apex retrieved in the Hollow Earth. And, um, he kicks Godzilla's butt. Yeah, he's like grabbing them by the back of his neck and slamming them all over the place and just tossing them. And I think he even gang stomps them a couple of times. And yeah, so he's about to kill Godzilla, but uh, Kong steps in and they both team up against Mecha Godzilla. They do some great combo moves, like Godzilla's grabbing one arm, Kong grabs the other, and they both slam his head into a building. I'm just like, that that's awesome, man. Um, needless to say, they both still can't take him out, so Kong grabs the axe. Godzilla charges it up, and Kong just goes all Mortal Kombat and splits Mecha Godzilla. It's Godzilla open with the uh, axe, and he's like bleeding oil and stuff, and it rips off his head. I'm just like, monster madness! And pretty much the movie actually ends there, and uh, Kong is basically living in the Hollow Earth now, instead of Skull Island, so they have a setup for probably another Kong movie. So it's gonna be interesting to see the directions that they go in the MonsterVerse after this, but for now on, this is the best MonsterVerse movie that we've gotten. It's very simple, straight to the point, and it gives you the monster fights. If you guys were complaining about the monster action before and saying there's too many human elements, there is no reason to complain now. This is everything that it can be and everything. It's living up to its full potential. Um, this is the Godzilla vs. Kong movie, and I truly believe that. Um, a lot of people have been giving positive reviews that are like, though those human characters are atrocious, I disagree. They just they just do things that bring the monsters together, and th that's all they really need to do. Um, can they write a good Godzilla movie and a good Kong movie? Yes, they could. But this movie was so aware of what it was that it, it didn't really need to. So, uh, and it gave me everything that I wanted as a Godzilla fan and a partial Kong fan. So, I, I really liked it a lot. Um, Definitely buying this on Blu-ray when it comes out, and I definitely saw it in the theaters. I, I wanted to get a review out sooner, and I actually was offered a early screening ticket to see this, but I rejected it saying I only want to see this in theaters when it comes out. And I did, and it was the, it was the best choice that I made. Um, I, I wouldn't want to watch this on a smaller screen for a while. But yeah. Definitely seeing it again and then Dolby Digital, man, because this is just, it's amazing. If you guys have seen it, make sure you guys leave your thoughts down below. Um, subscribe to the channel, please, and share this video around because I'm desperate. And uh, thank you for watching the video, and if you guys liked the video, make sure to subscribe today to join the Isaiahization.